Hey, there we go. Good morning. Welcome back to the stream. It is March 15th, 2018. My name is Jeff Fritz, and uh, I've got a new hat today. Going with a Thor hat. My uh, my daughter recommended I grab this one when we were out last night. Um, special stream today, of course, what always is whenever I bring on a guest. But uh, today, of course, I've, I'm bringing the boss on. Um, so I'm going to introduce, there he is. Scott Hanselman's joining us. Hey, Scott. Hello. It's very early. It's early, I know, on the West Coast. What's um, that little red thing around my name? That is, that's just the selection. Oh, that's just me that selecting things in OBS. Um, so very interesting. we've seen over the last, what, the last week or two, there was a new release of ASP.NET Core. Uh, not full release, right? The preview of 2.1 went out. Um, yeah. And, and we've heard Damien talk about, you know, huge performance improvements in this, right? Like, on small projects, it's like a 50% build speed increase. Bigger projects, like 90% speed increase. Crazy performance improvements. But you've been spending time upgrading a website from, mm -hmm. what was it, AS, an ASP.NET yeah. website. Actually, you know, I could probably, I, I, yeah, we're going to be using Visual Studio Live Share, so I can't yeah. really share my screen too much, but... I was using Web Matrix 3, and uh, gosh, well, I don't even know what that was. It was an old version of .NET full framework, and I've been I've been running that for 10 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm on I'm on a new version of Windows 10, and I was getting to the point where I couldn't install Web Matrix uh, and get it to, to reliably deploy. Um, I didn't have any metrics at all or any instrumentation. The site would pick up, and I wouldn't know why. So. I literally upgraded from that web matrix over to uh, to Razor Pages, mm. and I thought it was going to be like a total rewrite. And honestly, it took like four hours. All the Razor converted over directly, um, and now I've I've got both a, a production site and a staging site. I'm running in Azure uh, on a uh, on a on a small along the side a bunch of other uh, other sites, and it's working really well. And now I'm adding all the little ASP.NET 2.1 features to but, make it but Hang on, let's back up a second. We know your websites get a ton of traffic because, I mean, <laughs> whenever you mention it something... A, it gets it, a little bit of traffic. It, yeah, it I mean, knocks it's, down. It's oh, yeah, it'll you can knock down websites easy. And you're sure. running on a small. That really says something about the performance well, of I'm the framework small... and the caching that you're doing. Well, to be clear, though, I'm running on a small with 16 other websites because yeah. I don't want to pay for an individual small for the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. The podcast is not a profit center. It's just my little thing I do on the side. So it's effectively, it could, it runs fine on a, um, it runs fine on a, on a shared, which is $8 a month. So yeah, it's really about caching and I'll, I'll show you all that caching as well. Cool. All right. So why don't we go over to the code? You have a live share link that you can share with me and we can take a look at your code here on my machine. Yeah. Now the, the, just to, put this into context for po folks that are watching you and I, I'm in Portland, you're in Philly. We usually, when we're working, working for the last five years, we share our screens to each other and we throw pixels across the wire. Mm -hmm. So I'll use, we'll use zoom or Skype for business or Google hangouts or literally anything that will take a rectangle and send it across the internets. Uh, and as of yesterday, I've been using Visual Studio Live Share. Let me let me send you that. So I go into Visual Studio Code yep. and I say share, and then I'm going to give you a link. Okay, and where I right. give it to you. I'll put it over now here. I'm not going to put my Visual Studio on the screen yet because I want to make okay. sure that I get connected and nobody else sees the link. All right. So I just chatted you a link to Visual Studio Live Share, and you don't have the code. This is what's really important to understand. And by the way, I I, I started using this yesterday afternoon. Yeah. And I'm freaking blown away by this. It's nuts. All okay. Right. Um, he then will take this thing, and and he he doesn't have the code. He didn't get. He didn't go and do a git clone. And even more specifically, he doesn't even have the version of ASP.NET that I have. He doesn't have my database. He doesn't have my environment variables. What he's going to do is he's going to basically remotely connect to my Visual Studio code. But what's cool is. about it though is that. He's using, you're using Visual Studio, Co you're using Visual Studio full or proper. Yep. yep. I'm using Visual Studio code. Okay. So I don't have your source code. 
Right. And after connecting, you could see up here in the on oh, top of the screen, okay. there's Scott's initials. I'm selecting some text here. Yep. That's me, right? You got a selection like, uh, thing over your head, by the way. Oh, yeah. There you go. I was um, fixing yeah, so my camera. So this is me doing stuff. Um, and then the, the other part, check this out. I can go down here in Visual Studio, and I can say share local server. You can't see this. And I'm going to go and type in port 5001. Mm-hmm. I just exposed port 5001. Does it pop up on your side? So it doesn't show it explicit here, explicitly on my side, but when you start, right? So yeah. our debugger sessions are connected, right? right? I'm actually, I can actually see tunneling through the internet all the way down into Scott's machine. So when Scott debugs, my uh, Visual Studio will go into debug and then I'll be able to browse to that server you just exposed. Right, so I'm going to, uh... Yeah, so I've just shared, I've just tunneled my local host. So you'll be able to go to localhost 5000, and it's really mine. Exactly. Can you? Was there a place on your side where you can look at the things that are shared to you? Um, I see that I see oh, my yes, initials yes, yes. up there. Look at this. Click on join. And click on view lay shared local servers. And click on, it shows click on that. me here. There's there you the go. servers. See? Yeah, this is worth pointing out though, and, and this may cause problems. Um, do you have something on port 5001 already? You know what? I was running. I was running just a little bit ago. I was running a a test here locally, but I do not see, have it see running. If you have there. anything running, the reason that this is interesting and why it you know may be a problem is I, I port five thousand for me is HTTP. Mm -hmm. Port five thousand and one is HTTPS. Okay, but uh, the um, but but uh, but but my environment variables are set to redirect someone from insecure to secure, which will mean it'll share to your port five. It'll go and redirect five thousand and one, which you don't have running. Right. So you got to think about these things, right? Right. So if I uh, copy the clipboard here, when you start, I'll be able to open a browser mm -hmm. and see that. Now Ward in the chat here is saying that the screen sharing that we're using is snappier. That's because we're not using screen sharing. Exactly. Now I'm gonna like. Do the I'm gonna to look to the camera with intensity right now to make this point because it's freaking me out. <laughs> but I, what I'm sending over the wire isn't pixels. Nope. It's it's me. Can you make it so I'm there? You go. Look. Yeah. Let me it's, pin you. So I'm now following he's gonna, you. He's gonna pin me, right? So he's following me. This is my cursor. I'm gonna just move it around. Watch this. Oh, go open another this file. This is me typing. See, I'm sending the text across the wire, not the picture. Then I'll get it. I'll go somewhere else. Uh. There you go. So here I'm now in another file. And it just follows. Okay. Because he didn't download the code. He's downloading just the text that is required to get the text editor going. And then effectively, I've got his Visual Studio on a string. Here's the part that's crazy, though. Maybe I'm on a Mac in VS Code, which is written in TypeScript. And he's on Windows in Visual Studio proper. He doesn't even have C Sharp installed at all on the oh, machine. Yeah. And he can see the, the debug. Oh, Scott, let's go a little bit further here. So you're working, oh, you have the code on your machine. I can edit here and I can do things like context dot and then I can control into this. Right. We're and typing it, at the same time. It's Google Docs for code. Absolutely. Totally nuts. Okay, cool. So let's try this for a second. Let me edit it. Let me go over. Let me explain how this this uh, this app works real quick. Is that all right with you? Absolutely. So this is this is this is already finished upgrading at this point. Yeah, yeah. To... But if you actually, if you do me a favor, go to. Um, can you share a browser to yourself, or can you go Absolutely. to hamflux.com? Absolutely. So I will I will open Edge because it's the premium web browser that everybody should be using. Uh, Hanselminutes.com, Sure. Okay. So that's my podcast. Hit archives. Uh, archives. Here we go. Okay, so scroll GDPR. down a little bit. So this is my this is my podcast. I would encourage you to to subscribe, please. You know, so if you're watching this show, you have no choice. You have to stop what you're doing and subscribe. Um, so we've got 600 different episodes, and then go ahead and like go all the way to the top and click on the Mark Durden one. Click on the which one? Uh, Six twenty. Oh, oh, Mark Durden. Sure. Okay, so now look at the URL. You've got a tiny. You got the the slash show number slash text. Yep, it looks like a show title. Right, and that's kind of like your Stack Overflow type thing. So if you put like 622 slash poo, it'll hopefully redirect you to the right location because the 622 is what matters, 
not the uh, the text, right? Yeah. Notice re- also that I think Balmer is uh, a little distracting. Um, <laughs> notice because it's happening every ten seconds. See how there's text that shows links to his blog and stuff right there? Oh yeah. Is okay. that Markdown that you have in That's Markdown, but then I convert it into HTML. Mm-hmm. So then back back out one, or back up one page mm-hmm. to, to to the main page, actually a little bit farther. Sure. You see that there's a there's oh, a, the Markdown's not there. So the short right. description is on the home page. Okay. The long description's on the main one, and then uh, you've got like an embedded uh, an embedded player, embedded player thing. And then if you click on interactive show transcripts down there, which mm-hmm. is looking for interactive show transcripts, this will take you off to a startup, which is freaking amazing. So you've got uh, some sort of a show ID that you yeah. need to carry along for this. And I haven't figured that part out yet, but we just click where it says type to the language at the top there. Pick one of that one there. And then scroll down a little bit. You see you've got a transcript of the show. Now mm. just click on, click on any one of the paragraphs. Calling from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. All right, and, and uh, uh, start. But you don't have a Cambodian accent, I must say. Play, is it no, I'm podcast? an Australian. People can't hear. It is. Um, <laughs> so that's an artifact of how I run. The, that's uh, fine. The anyway, it's playing the podcast, and then if you could, if you could hear it, it would actually highlight e- each word mm-hmm. as you go. Okay, so let's go back to to antiminutes.com. So, and, and then we'll minimize this, and we'll go back to the code. Yeah. All right. So, um, just to answer a couple things here that are coming up in the, uh, they can, they could hear the video remote. Um, so my, my desktop sound doesn't go back across Skype to oh, Scott. Oh, so they could hear, they could hear my show talking. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Okay, um, cool. and the comment from Doofer Dangler, what's with the random stuff popping up, Balmer, etc. Those are the things that we have embedded here in the video to allow you to interact and to show that there are folks who are joining us and interacting with the stream. Um, and you've got, just as a little bit of observation, somehow you keep getting red rectangles around stuff. You see the lower right corner there now? Yeah, I. it's just the current thing that's selected in OBS. It doesn't actually go out on the stream like that. It's in the broadcasting system, I see. Yep. This is very, this is very interesting. Yeah, I don't know about Balmer. I want to change that to Happy Sacha or something. All right, so let's go. Go ahead and follow me, and, and let's go back over to the... Uh, yes. CS, uh, CS project. Right, so I am pinned to you. So this is the project file that defines yes. how everything's working. All right. All right. So um, maybe you could, uh, I know that you work a certain way, but maybe you could make your fonts just a little bit bigger on your side. Just a little control scroll love for me. Uh, let's see what we got here. There you go. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. This makes, makes it easier for me. Okay. So target framework up here at the top. Oh my goodness. I love that I can select on my VS code and it's selecting on your side. That's mm-hmm. nuts. Okay, so here's the target framework ID of 2.1. I had to upgrade that when I upgraded to uh, to Visual Studio. When I upgraded to, sorry, it's very early. It's like seven in the morning. When you upgraded to .NET Core. When I upgraded to .NET Core to one, mm-hmm. I went to .NET Core app to one. And then this is interesting here. Uh, I went to not Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.ALL, which literally means everything, all. I went to uh, dot app, which is kind of, you know, less than everything. Sure. All, all literally means, like if you go like this, it literally means every possible thing, the entire dependency chain. Dot app is the kind of more middle of the road. Uh, you know, it's like a medium, medium large kind of a thing. And then I upgraded uh, this uh, to temporarily to the final version of preview one. And okay. then at some point, that'll end up becoming this, 2.1. Right. Okay? Now, I went and I hooked up this thing called Application Insights that we'll talk about a little bit later. But what's funny about it is that it turns out I didn't even need to do that. Apparently, with ASP.NET Core, you don't even need to add it. It'll be it's added there. automatically when you host it yeah. in Azure. Yeah. So that was silly of me. It's it's part of that we want to make we want to make using those features so easy to light up that when you're ready to use them it's just available for you. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So one of the things that's also interesting about this particular show is that there are um, it's ten years old. As it, it is both a new brand new site, but it also has some historical baggage. The historical baggage is when I was running at Carl Franklin. Carl Franklin has runs a podcast called .NET Rock. .NET Rocks. Um, 
Carl Franklin exposed his database IDs. Mm. And it was this was 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Sure. So you used to go and visit hanselminutes.com slash database ID or mm. show ID, right? Which is not show number 600. It's database ID number 1500 and blah, 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 blah. Or a GUID or something. Yes, it's a totally different way of doing things. Yeah. And I spent a long time writing this really complicated um, uh, rewrite rule system. Okay. Because he used to have feeds, like look at this, you know, so, this was the name of the RSS feed. So let's back up a second. A rewrite rule is what? Let's make sure folks know what that is. So the idea would be you, you come into, I'm going to use this as a scratch pad. Sure. People used to come into handsomeminutes.com slash something like that. Mm -hmm. And that was the RSS feed. Right. But I've since gone to secure. Right. Sure. So it's going to be HTTPS. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be subscribe. So I've got a couple different things here. I need to make this secure. Okay. And I need to put it at the right location. And then I need to reconcile a 302, which mm -hmm. is a temp redirect, versus a 301, which is a permanent one that you're saying to Google, hey, you got to follow here and then update your bookmarks. Gotcha. Okay? Um, so a rewrite rule file, there's two kinds. There's IIS rewrites, and then there's Apache, uh, I think it's called HT Access. Right. No, mod rewrite, right? Uh, yes, mod, mod yeah. rewrite. H mod HT rewrite, Access is more HT of a security access. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are all different things you can do on these kind of legacy uh, systems to to make lists of rules of stuff to rewrite. So and what's worth pointing out is that I could do this in multiple ways. I could write code to do this. Right. But I have a 10-year-old XML file. So th the rewrite rules... All they do is they take the location that somebody's navigated to and translate it into something that your web server is actually serving at mm -hmm. that location. Right. Uh, someone in the chat there just said... Uh, well, our friend Suze Hinton has joined us. Yes, Suze Hinton, actually. Make sure that you check out her stuff. Absolutely. The no-op cat. At, she has, is at Twitch slash... I call her, in my mind, I say noob cat. Yep. No-op yep. cat. And Check her out. She's a legendary Twitch streamer. So thank and, you for um, coming. One of our other Twitch friends, um, Fierce Kittens, I don't know what her real name is, was going to chime in this Fierce. morning. It's Fierce. Her last name is Kittens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey. Uh, she's actually getting a, a medical procedure done a little bit later this morning. You know, our thoughts go out to her, but she's going to join us on the stream in the next few weeks. Good. So, uh, anyway, the gentleman or lady, was whoever this person is, I can't, I can barely read the chat here, uh, wanted to know if I was using it to fix the canonical host name. I'm working on that part. That's this rule here. Uh, so you can see I've got some of these commented out. So, you know, we'll get into that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and just control Z my way to glory. So here's what's cool, though. I've got this old, older... Uh, start up. Here we go. I've got this older file, but it works. This is important. I've got an older rewrite file, mm -hmm. but it works, right? So, as people are pointing out very kindly on the uh, on the chat here, yeah, sure. You know, Sinclair is saying, uh, "Hey, good. I can go and rewrite this in the code. Totally can. Absolutely, I can rewrite this in the code, but I don't need to. I've got a ten-year-old file. I've got a brand new modern framework. I open up the older." IIS rewrite, and look, there's an IIS URL rewrite, and look at this here. I can even mix and match. Check this out. Look at this, people. I could go and add a mod rewrite. So let's say I've got an old WordPress mod rewrite that I want to use here, or a historical CMS. No reason to go and write 20 of these things. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. This, so I'm really, that that saved me just this this code right here, opening up the rewriter, adding it, and then here on line 78, using it, saved me a day. So that was cool. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's start at the beginning, if that's okay. Sorry, I'm a little random today. That's okay. So, okay. so you've, 
you've got the initial translation from your old format, folks that were using for a long period of time with right. those, the various locations of your files to preserve your, I your never SEO break URLs. URLs. You yeah. never break the URL. So important. So important. So to preserve that, you've now got the rewriter in there that'll convert the old yep. way that they were produced to however your new pages will receive and generate those yep. URLs. And, and the point is mix and match, use what makes you happy. Doesn't matter. Did my, did my, uh, Camera stop working? I think it did. All right, let me change cameras. Hang on. Mm-hmm. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, there's my wife. Try again. Developers, 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 developers. There it goes. And is it working? Oh yeah, you're there. All right, sorry. I'm having trouble with my camera. I need to update the firmware. Okay. So we start up our app and I call out whether or not I'm in development or not. And this ENV, this environment, I set that with an environment variable, well, or I can set that in launch settings and I can basically say, am I in production or am I in development or am I in staging? Right, that hosting environment object there has a lot of information besides just what environment you're running on. You can see information about the machine in there as well. Yep, yep. And here we go. So if I, if I start locally, I'm in development. Right, and then I set an environment variable like this up in Azure that says production. Okay, right. All right. So if I'm in development, I would do what's called add user secrets. This is kind of like my connection strings and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is secrets for for me to talk to my backend APIs so I don't accidentally check in um, check in my connection strings and stuff. This is super super helpful. Yep. So in development, I get that from, from local secrets that I don't check in. And then um, in production, uh, I just put them in environment variables. Uh, Windrek is asking if this is Visual Studio 15.6. I'm using Visual Studio Code on my side. Right. And what I've are you doing? I've you installed want? the public preview of 15.7. So I have mm. that available here. By uh, the way, uh, Jonathan Carter just showed up on the stream with Brady Gaster. Jonathan Carter uh, owns the Visual Studio live stream thing, so he's probably here to make sure I don't break it. And actually, uh, I extended an invite to Jonathan. He's going to join us for a live stream in the coming weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. So we'll take a look at live share, see what kind of cool things we can do with that. Yeah, yeah, it's totally nuts. Okay, so if I'm in development, I'd use the application insights that I'll talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then... This, I'm going to talk about that in a second, this custom page handler. That's okay. A, that's a bug. We found a bug. We're not a bug. We found a behavior we did not like. Okay. <laughs> which is not a bug. It's actually a, it's a it's, designed behavior, but I don't like it. It's a great feature from David Fowler. It turns out you can swap everything out of ASP.NET Core. So we literally didn't like the way it picked page handlers. And we just swapped it out with our own. So that's pretty insane. Okay. So I use an in-memory cache uh, rather than like a Redis or whatever, because this particular podcast site only has one one instance, one node. Sure, okay. it's that one small instance you were talking mm -hmm. about. Now I use Razor Pages, and if we go over here to Pages, we can see I've got like index.cshtml. Actually, so... This is one of the areas that I need to help because navigating around Solution Explorer, it doesn't track you, nor does it track you when you scroll. So if you use your scroll wheel, oh, I won't no, I see, see that. So what I need to do is click and then select, and then it'll follow. You got it. Okay, cool. So here's like my my, my index page, and this is the show, uh, show a page, right? Show the home page, okay? So I've got my layout. Which right. is up here. This is where what you get when you go to hanselminutes.com. And you go to hanselminutes.com and notice this here. This is so cool. See see this here? That's not an that's not a, an HTML tag. Oh yeah. I love that's the environment tag, tag helper. helper. This thing is freaking nuts. So check this out. I have development, staging, and production, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm one person, right? This is the other thing that's so cool. Is that you feel like you're like DevOps? I feel like I'm a whole IT department, but it's Oh my just gosh, me. yes. Okay. So in development, I use this CSS. When I'm not in development, so excluding development, I use a minified one. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't want staging to show up accidentally on Google or Bing or sure. DuckDuckGo. So we love I DuckDuckGo. went and this here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Now, Sinclair is asking, when should I use, this is so good, I love this, Sinclairinator uh, is saying, when when should I use um, when razor, razor pages, pages, when views right? and controllers. All right, here's the part, this is crazy. So, so that's Jeremy Sinclair, by the way. Jeremy, it's MVC. Mm -hmm. So I'm using razor pages, but razor pages is just a thin layer on top of MVC. So I'm using I'm using both. Exactly. Like I don't have to pick. If I want to just throw a controller in there, it's there. Right. So that's what I think is so crazy, and it's hard to to get one's head around. But but I'm already doing it. So if you go back to startup, look, I just you're still using MVC. That out. Yeah, I just commented that part out. But I am using MVC because MVC is razor pages. Right. So and, and blown, hopefully I've blown Jeremy Sinclair's mind. And, and right at one point, we even kicked around the idea of calling razor page, pages controllerless views. And we would – the idea was – Controllerless views. Yeah, I could put that. Well, that's right. Good, that's the idea good. was we would almost scaffold a, a very simple generic controller in the background and you know route to whatever the view was in the pages mm -hmm. folder. Yeah. But you don't have to do that work. We've already yep, taken yep. care of it. Space shot here on the chat just said, "Can I share any text file?" Yeah, of course. We're not we're not debugging. I'm just sharing text. I can open up JSON files. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a JavaScript JSON file. Files. Here's a JSON file. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't care. CSS. Okay. Absolutely. So back over to here. So so I've Excuse added me. one. I've added one option. Remember, I said that I wanted to have not just ID. But I also wanted to say ID slash. You see how it says star path? That's the catch-all. Right. You wanted to put the title of the show at the end of it. Right. Exactly. So um, now, razor page, razor pages. It the view the views are razor. They just have a little bit of extra information. We'll look at that in a little bit. Here, I've said, you know, hey, require HTTPS, which is nice. So it'll handle. That uh, a lot of that stuff for me. I've said if I'm in development, I want a friendly debug page. Let me scroll that up. Now this, Damien told me that I don't need this part anymore. There's actually middleware to do that for you, and that's here on line 85. And and I said that's how would I discover that? And Damien said uh, read the manual because I didn't read the manual. Here's one of the things that I forgot to do. So. I, uh, and, and just to be clear, uh, Damien that you're referring to, Damien Edwards, the program manager for oh, ASP.NET. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So, um, oop, hang on a second. What time is it? No, we're good. You got no, about no. Um, someone, so, so, so here's a funny story. Someone I was supposed to talk to about some, some coaching of, um, what's your, what is your thing? It's twitch.com slash. Twitch TV. Twitch TV, C Sharp Fritz? Yep. Well, someone I was supposed to call yesterday is Skyping me. <laughs> and uh, so now I'm going to tell her to join the, uh, the Skype. There you go. Okay. So HTTP redirection is basically saying make sure that all the links, everything that you do, you know, is, uh, is HTTPS. So that's a very. This is the kind of thing that basically obviates the need for me to mess around with a lot of those um, XMLs uh, and redirectors. But that's fine. All right. So, do, 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 do. that's basically that, which is very clean. Let's get to the home. Let's get to the actual homepage here. Okay. So on layout, that's just my layout page, and it's got my open graph and my you know my jQuery and all kind of stuff like that. And so and, there, and the the underscore layout in, for the razor page works the same way that we used to do underscore layout with MVC in regular ASP.NET. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just my layout page. I literally copied this over from my web matrix stuff from 10 years ago, and it worked. Okay. Nothing interesting here. It's just an HTML page. Mm -hmm. And if you go through it, it's all static. Static, 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 until it gets to here. Render body. Okay. All right. Render body then picks one of these things like index dot Now look here. See on, on line one there, it says page int ID, right? I'm, I'm going or to. ID int. 
I'm going to ask our friend Steve there to be quiet for a little bit so we can hear you. What is happening? Yeah, Steve is, uh, is, tra- is busy. Trying, trying to bother me. No, <laughs> no, dis- no disrespect to our former fearless leader. Oh, uh, we love the Clippers. What is that, sports ball? Yes, uh, he owns the Los Angeles Clippers now. Hmm. Yeah, I'm only into esports now since Drake is on doing Fortnite on Twitch. Okay, hey, you're catching up. We've got Dude, 174 followers. I felt followers. like I was watching it. I felt like I was watching a piece of freaking internet history last night. Watching Drake play Juju on Fortnite on my phone in my bed. I was oh, like yeah. for the culture. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Absolutely. long story. It was beautiful. Okay, so All right. page page int ID. So that is me hitting you know slash six twenty two slash whatever, right? Now right. I've asked. I want to be able to go like this. This is what I want. So I want to stack up my pads. So okay, uh, but let, you can't, and that's why I had to put the second one over in the. Uh, so let's let's make sure it, it's clear to folks, right? That at page directive, that's something specific that goes into the Razor View to tell MVC that this is a Razor page. Right. It's the at page is where it became a Razor page. Right. And then the information after it is you declaring the route that it's going to listen for and capture mm-hmm. extra information. All right, cool. Right. Exactly. But it's still it's still routing, right? It's still MVC. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here, this is index.cshtml. Index.cshtml.cs might initially feel like, or to some people, feel like it's a code behind, but it's not really. It's kind of the controller for the thing. But in fact, it's just a smart model. So rather than this being a a, uh, a controller, it's like a view model or page model that's yeah. smart. Okay. So the whole point of this model is to get the data and set it up for the, the page. Okay. So I start up in the constructor and notice that it says, I show database DB. I don't actually ever new anything up. I'm not off going new this and new that. Okay. Are you texting somebody right now? I am on my console over here adjusting some things. Okay. Just to ensure that uh, Steve goes quiet for a little bit. Excellent. Okay. So the the iShow database got injected back over here. This is where you do all of your your dependency injection, you say, hey, friends, if you ever ask for an iShow database, give me one of these and make sure that there's only ever one. So my, my database is really a JSON file mm-hmm. that I go and I, I get from my API for my back end. Okay. So going back over here, I couldn't figure out how to fig- uh, I wanted to reuse the models and stuff and the, uh, the, the not reuse the models. I wanted to reuse some of the HTML because the home page and the archives page look really, really similar to each other. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I've got a little thing here that says if you're on the home page or not, it's a flag. You know, everything everything in computer science comes down to a flag. It's bad. So, yeah. So Jeremy's saying it's a uh, in the chat here. It's a view model. It's a smart view model. So I go and I get the database and then I have some some stuff here. These are this is the part that took me a while to understand. These things here, 18 through 21, that's the view model, okay? It's not the model, it's the view model. The model is whatever I decided for it to be, and the model is like basically the database, what's underneath mm-hmm. it. So I've got a method here called onGet. I've made it async, but it's onGet. So this is basically on verb. So I can go and say, you know, public on post, on put, on whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm watching so, you. remember this. That's my path, right? So I don't have to do any model binding or put anything there. It just whatever I pass it on the path shows up here. Now I put in a question mark because I make that optional. The integer is optional. Right. That's a standard .NET type. It's a value type. Stick a question mark on the end, and it becomes nullable. Right. So. Oh. Some lovely individual saying, Razor pages are for noobs. Learn to program or use real MVC. I suspect that they are uh, trolling, but I would point out 
that I do not need to use more than I need to use. Right. And I am using MVC. This if, is MVC. I if, could drop a are, controller in and it would be just fine. Yeah, if folks are used to using that, that page-first or page-focused develop, development model, this works great for them. You get all the same features. You can respond to all four um, HTTP verbs without yeah, having yep. to think about it. You're doing on get here, but we could right. do on post, on put, right. on delete. And now the other thing that's cool is that, of course, just to point out, and people are helping out in the chats there, how how useful this is. Because I injected iShow database, mm -hmm. I could make I test show database, right? Maybe but we can do another show another time. Because just right test now, database, right? Yeah, exactly. A concrete I'm, implementation. Yeah, pardon me. Yes, exactly. Test it. It's early. Um, right now, this is loading out of uh, a URL, but I also have these test data. See my test data folder on the left hand side there. Uh, let's um, see. Oh, right here. Yep, right above it's your head. Just above me. Exactly. Okay. It's up there. So here's a little double duty action here. I've got. Get shows, that's my database. We'll look at that in a second. I have to do a check to say, not if it's null, because it's a nullable, if it has a value, right? If we have an ID, meaning we went to a show. Okay. okay. Then I go and get that show. If that failed, maybe you went to hanselminutes.com slash 999. 666. Six, six. I, well, I would hope you would never go there. You would go redirect to the homepage, right? Now, at the bottom of HanselMinutes.com is the last 16 shows. So I go and mm. say, hey, look, here's the last 16 shows. Now, here's so, where it gets even more interesting. So get shows returns in in descending order the list of mm -hmm. shows. Okay, yep, yep. got it. Oh, and this is interesting. I just realized that this code here, where I go and get all the shows, mm -hmm. and then here I say, well, if you don't have a path, you're, I'm not actually at HanselMinutes.com slash show number slash title. Right. Then redirect permanent to the canonical URL. I don't need to take these shows. See, I don't need to take them. No, do it later. If I'm leaving, I do it later. Yeah. There you go. So I just change that. Okay. All right. Now, have you ever seen our friends Mads Christiansen showed me a trick there? Put that line back. Put 34 back where it was. Do a couple Control Zs there for me. Check this out. Yep. There's I want to remind people who are watching who just showed up that I'm not running on Jeff's machine. I'm oh, over yeah. here on a machine you can't see. And look, I can select text. That's me controlling Jeff's Visual Studio. I'm on Visual yeah. Studio Code. He's on Visual Studio proper. I'm on a Mac. He's on a PC. And it all just kind of works. Cats and Pretty dogs cool. living together. Living together. Mass so hysteria. There's a hotkey you could have used to move that line down. I just want to go back and highlight it for, for some of our viewers. If you put um, do a couple control Zs to push the shows back where it was, you can actually use alt up and down, and it'll move that line for you. Ah. Thank you for that. All right. Yeah, there you so go. Learn if, something. if I, in fact, have a show, so this is... If I, in fact, um, do not have a show, I'm on the home page. Mm -hmm. Well, here I just show the current show. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. And then I go and no, skip okay. that current show. Notice the difference. And this is another thing that's nice, just about the link. Look at line 34 and compare it to line 39. Right here no, I go on. and Tell take... you what, you, I'll highlight 34, you highlight 39. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, go ahead. Okay. So... On line 34, I go and take 16 shows, and I sh I show them because I'm you know, doing on the homepage or whatever, or I show I'm on a reg a regular page. But then when I'm already showing a show, I skip one and then take the next 16, right? Because you don't want to you minus that show. It's sure. just so nice. It's a very clean looking controller. Okay, now here's where things get really hairy. Down here, I have a second get because there's those old show IDs that are floating around. Remember I told you that there's a there's an issue. Right. Okay. So so this isn't called on get. So it's not the standard method no. that's going to be called it's when it's on get blah 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 blah. Right. Now how does it know to trigger this one? I will show you in a second because this is freaking a genius. Okay. Uh, not genius me, genius, genius someone else, genius. Okay. Standing on the shoulders of giants. So this is really int database ID. Okay. Oh, look, hang on. I, I just want to call something out real quick. We now have more Mixer viewers than we do Twitch viewers. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, I tweeted the Mixer link. 
So here's a database ID. We go there and then I have to actually look that up because the database ID I've stored, the old SQL Server database I've stored inside of. It's a, it's a property on your show? Yeah, I made it a property on the show. Because look, I made the old URLs. GUIDs. Uh, so they're, they're a GUID. And right. they, they, they're, uh, GUID, a globally universal identifier. It doesn't have to be. Exactly. Right. It doesn't have to be that that weird hex address. Anything. Yeah. A URL is itself a GUID. Right. Okay? So then I go and say, hey, go get me a GUID that ends in that database ID. Then from there, I can just go and build a permanent redirect. Oh, your camera froze again. Oh, uh, that's very attractive. Um, and I'm, as, I, as I'm explaining this code, hang on, I'm realizing. There you go. You're back. I'm realizing that this is wrong also. Okay, so look at this. I'm, I'm finding bugs as I explain it to you. It's, it's okay, what this is about, find, pair programming. Go and, find, go and find the old show. Yep. If you found it, and I say redirect, I know what I'm doing here. I'm just saying last show dot show number. Mm. That would mean redirect to like slash uh, six, six, uh, you know, 622. But that's not the real canonical URL. The canonical URL is what I call the awesome URL. That's the one that has fully the SEO loaded. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take that. And that's what I want to do. See, because I'm redirecting permanent, which is just going to end up getting redirected again. Yeah. Elsewhere in my code. So you're doing two hops. Inst right. So let's go look at awesome URL. I'm going to right click and say, go to definition. And now you're going to come along with me. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you have a class called SEO. That's interesting. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah. This is, this is, this is a class where I've got, it's become like my helpers. Everyone has a class called helper, right? Sure, sure. Um, I love this. I love this. Uh, checks mix. By the way, that's the greatest checks mix. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I check us. Oh, that's so good. Uh, checks mix is saying explaining codes equals you know goes to finding bugs. I love it. That's exactly I, right. Oh. Uh, Me explaining this to you, I'm fine. I found four, five, six bugs already, which is bananas. Oh yeah. Um, there was another question that we had just a second ago asking if you can do more than one person on live share last night. We yeah. had, we had Scott, myself, Damien and Jonathan Carter all connected on live share yeah. at once. I've had up to five. I'm sure you could have more at some point. Oh yeah. Okay. Five's the so, limit right now. This, this is old code. I don't know if this is the right thing or whatever, but basically I clean up the, the title and turn it into a friendly URL with hyphens. So right. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It just makes a pretty URL. Wouldn't instead of you doing some of that regex replace, mm -hmm. wouldn't would it be easier to do like HTTP encoding? No, because I want it to be pretty. Okay, so you're doing I'm a little bit very, more than just I'm HTTP. Very I'm very specifically saying only give me alphanumerics, then specifically take spaces and turn them into hyphens. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Exactly. Now, um, one point that someone made is, hey, I'm in a public class called SEO. Why am I not saying SEO dot awesome URL, right? Right. So you're right. Go ahead. Jeremy was pointing that out. That's because, and this is this is cheesy to be clear. No, it's Notice not it cheesy. Says public, well, it's a little aggressive. See how I say last show dot as awesome URL. Right. See this magic here. That would mean a static function that passes in show. Mm -hmm. Then I would say SEO dot as awesome URL passing in show. If I put in this, I just spot welded a new function onto shows. Right. So show here now has a thing called awesome URL. So I can You've... go here and I can say last, oops, ah, I don't know, I just deleted everything. I can go last show, which is a variable, uh -oh. and I can get... When you deleted everything, we lost you. There you go. Okay, sorry. Go ahead and hit dot. Do you get IntelliSense? I do not right now. There's okay. there's a little bit of an issue there. Been. Go ahead and type last show for you and see if you get sure. it. Sure. Last show. If I do it, I don't get IntelliSense coming through. Oh, no, it came through. There it is. Yeah, yeah. That's because I was building and building and building, so the IntelliSense needs a built clean. Okay, so... As awesome URL is, is. An, is an ex, is an extension method, or it's like I like to say, it's it's spot welded. Right now, now 
with, to... there's actually a different icon for the method there to show that it's an extension method. Right. Um, you can't really see it with the dark color theme that I'm using. Yeah, that's true. Um, now, that, that th there's a good. question. Let me j just highlight one question here in the chat room. Um, can we be working on two different files at the same time? Yes. So you're in index.html. I'm going to um, also open helpers yeah. HTML. I think Jeremy's so I have also the two... pointing out a bug for me that I don't need to do this. Let me see where you are. You are over here. Um, He's saying this 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 thing here. Yeah. Oh I'm, yeah. I'm I'm calling it statically. That's because there's this awesome URL helper method, and this one here that I have ten years old that I spot welded on top of string. Mm -hmm. That's not clearly Jeremy has pointed out a, 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 a not just a bug but a sloppiness. I need to figure. I need to reconcile my awesome URLs. <laughs> So that is a very valid point. Thank you for that. Right. You could put like a V2 at the end of it or something just to make it clear that it's the older one or put well, an obsolete but, but on top I, of it. I've over, I've, I've got, I've, I'm hiding, I'm putting as awesome URL on every string. Uh, right. Well, so yeah. to be clear, let's look at yeah. this, right? There's three different ways to do this, right? I could just call it, but, but look, as awesome URL is on the string itself. See? Oh my gosh. So I could also do that. So, First you know, name there's... as awesome URL. Right, exactly. Any string as awesome URL, right? I love that people like the name spot welding. Why aren't you using string builder? Uh, where? Um, in your... So, so I am 100% deeply sold on, on these, these things. What are the these called? String interpolation. String interpolation. Holy crap. Like you used to have to go and do string dot format, mm -hmm. you know, foo foo dot bar bar or whatever, and oh then go gosh, like yes. this, and then go like that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm so into this here now. As far as string builder, like down here or whatever, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Uh, standby reloading, a couple of different reasons. In a minute, I'll show you where I do some aggressive caching. Phrase that too lower. It just doesn't matter, and 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 this is just this could be laziness on my part. It could be just I'm old, but I just would argue, and I'd be interested in what the people think. Is um, I think El Renark wants to know why. He said this is great. I'm sorry. He says I'm <laughs> no, the only one trying to make this look like a real Twitch chat. Uh, We're supposed to call people noobs. No. noobs. As long as you call me a noob in an inclusive and kind way, as long as you're supportively lifting me up while tearing me down, then you can call me a noob. Scott, we've <laughs> it, we've got a, a moderator bot here that makes sure that we respect each other. There's no bullying, none of that that's stuff. A, we want to make that's sure. A noob thing to say. Hey, you know what? <laughs> We're working I together. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Yeah. So the point is, why am I not using String Builder? Because it's a micro optimization. Because I'm talking about sixty bytes. Um, because I think it's easier to read. But it, because yeah. I'm ultimately, this is a database that's creating stuff that's going to be ultimately cached. It's so a we'll one-time operation for the yeah. most part. It's a good. It's a good question, though. To be and clear, it's a good question. To be to be honest, when I look at at that code that you wrote, it's very readable to me. I you know, that. that's. What I'm looking for is somebody who's going to have to pick up and maintain something like that in the future. All right. So let's go over here to the database, okay? Because I've only got a couple more minutes left. Sure. Okay? And folks are showing now, off their emotes in the chat. Uh, so this is good, and I appreciate that. So uh, uh, the real so-so hero is saying, let's hit retrieving, uh, re retrieving records in the database. This is a little complicated. Well, not complicated. It's a little interesting. So this is a quote-unquote database, which is really a lie. It used to be called show database and it talked to a SQLite database or something, but I moved over to a thing called Simplecast, mm. which is a REST API for podcasts, okay? Okay. Um, but I like calling stuff databases even though it's not. This is really a REST cl client front end a, for this thing. It's a data store. The, the data actual store. location of it, you don't really care about. Mm -hmm. And more specifically, it's static. It's shared by everybody. Um, it stores the API key, the private API key that I use. Go ahead and scroll up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was going to say you're hiding behind me now. And then I have these things that are injected in. So the memory cache, the hosting environment, the logger, and the config. 
I pull the API key out of config, which is just an environment variable. So this could be a text file that's anyway. So you configured I showed a database to be injected inside of startup. In this constructor, you have a couple of things here that are being injected into right. this. Those cool are being constructed. This. If I want more stuff, I just go I more stuff, stuff. And if it's in the container, it'll just be automatic. Someone will make me one. So just like you like spot welding as the name for extension methods, in, in, in version of uh, control or dependency injection, it's just, it's just a declaration. It's just you of saying, hey, somebody, anybody, give me one of these. I don't care how you get it. Just get it done. And it shows up. And then you stop newing stuff up, which is cool. Now, internally, though, I've got a couple of things that I do new up. I do new up an HTTP client. So arguably, you might want to come up with another way to do that. Right. We've but, seen there's a new HTTP client factory that does that now for yeah, us. Exactly. And I have not I have not yet swapped that out. There is a new HTTP client factory. We should probably do that. Oh, this is a good question. Why is the cache not read only? Um, you're, yeah, yeah, lazy, you're... La laziness, incorrectness. It's good. There we go. We improved. Doesn't it. doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt, but it's tidier. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go down to get shows. All right, let this me scroll one is, down. This there is a go. little bit, and that please don't judge me. This is a uh, look at all those comments. There's a lot of comments. Okay, all right. So I'll come back to line 59 in a second here. It's a little goofy. And you're getting uh, mad and, props for the semaphore slim. Oh, they like that? Okay. We'll talk about semaphore slim in a second. Uh, so we've got a cache key that I'm going to cache the shows because the shows only update like once a week. So I've decided to sure. just update the cache every four hours. I just pick the number. Sure. That means if I update administ if I update admin, I can either have a webhook that clears the cache or I can just wait four hours. So what I do is I go and I say, hey, cache, do you have any shows? And then I log out, hey, I found the shows. Now this is interesting. Look at line 59. I, st I usually would say shows where published at is not, you know, is before now. But I found that there are multiple locations where I leave extra, extra semicolon. Um, so I, I just stored the where clause. Now I could have used the C sharp seven local function, mm -hmm. but I just decided to store the where, where clause because a where clause, right, just takes a, a show and then returns a bool. It's a funk that says, hey, do I want this or not? that funk can be stored and then I can reuse it multiple places. That way I can leave my function in, uh, in multiple, multiple ways. I actually leave in three or four different ways. Okay, so, hey, Cash, do you have any shows? Cool, got them, bail, I'm done, instant, it's milliseconds. Let's lock, let's hold on this semaphore for a second because lots of people could be trying to load this page. Mm -hmm. And here's the part that's weird, <clears throat> double checks. Hey, Cash, has anyone made it here in this space? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. In, in, the, in, the, in the 42 milliseconds it took me to do this, did anything change? Oh, really? Seriously, it did? Uh, we'll say amazing. Amazing speed. Amazing speed cache hit. Yeah. How, did you, how did you pull it off? You filled the cache. You checked earlier it wasn't there, you checked again. This is a very common thing to do. And to avoid, you know, weird situations, you really gotta do it, right? Okay, then this is where I have not yet done this yet. This comment here is the loaded from a file. That's where I need to go and make test harness show database implements show database. Mm. But I haven't I haven't done it yet. Okay. So this is David how you're testing. Fowler David Fowler doesn't like this. He wants me to, he doesn't respect me. So he wants me to inject that. So at some point I will go and make a, another implementation of show database. Okay. Right. So then that actually if I wanted from the to, file. I could go over here and I could say, if it's in development, use the fake database, else use the show database. Or right. test for, test. test for an environment right. variable, test mode or something, mm -hmm. running yep. unit tests, whatever. Exactly. Totally up to you. Okay. Now, in the old days, uh, last week, you would say, uh, you would say, right? Okay. Hey, get string, get string async. 
and go and like get the string. Mm -hmm. um, arguably, I should probably chunk it or think about other ways, but um, I switched over to this version 524 Web API client. And here again, look at that string interpolation. If you go all the, could you go all the way to the end there? Oh, there it go. sees it. Oh, it sees it. Oh yeah. There's that API key, which again is nice because it's not getting checked into my GitHub repo. Right. I warn that I had a cache miss. Then I go and I get that URL, and then I read it all into a list of shows. So this, that moment there, content .read is async. Look how nice that is. That's actually doing the json.net deserialization for me. Right. So there cool? we go, looking at that. Read as async, returns a task, yield an object, blah, blah, blah. All right. Then Very I, and cool then logging. Stuff. I use log warning because it is a cache miss. Sure. So I want, and I want it to be in color. Okay. okay? Uh, for folks that are just showing up, I want to, and someone just said that they've never seen anyone code on Twitch before. Hello. Hello, oh, Mila, how are you? Where do you see that? Uh, Mila just said that. Hello, hello. Um, go and check out as we as we just said. Go check out Noop Cat. Go, go check out uh, was it Frantic Kittens? What's her Fierce name? Kittens. Fierce That's Kittens. Of course. A lot of cool people coding on Twitch. So then down here, I go and I set up a cache object and I say I want to sh uh, stuff that into the cache for four hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now every once in a while my API fails, uh, where the back end of my podcast goes down, and I haven't figured out how to do a double try like. I want to like try right. again. Uh, something like Polly can help with that, but throwing Poly. it here, right? Polly. Well, that's... what I'm doing here is I'm catching it, logging it, and then I want to point out you don't throw e. No. You throw. You rethrow. Because I can't do anything about it. It's exceptional. That's the that's the thing about exceptions, right? If it's right. exceptional, then it's, it's by exceptional. by throwing without specifying an exception, you're actually catching this part of the stack. So that mm -hmm. you'll get this line 124 included where the right. next place catches that throw. Now, let me remove the comments just to show you and our friends. There you go. Can you make that so await semaphore slim is at the top there? Await. There yeah, we go. Yep. I'm controlling your scrolling. There you go. That's it, basically. Yeah. Right? Nice and clean. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo and put my comments back because I need those. Super sure. important. Okay, now if we scroll down here, I show database. Look at this. So there's your it's, interface. Just get nothing. shows. It's get shows, right? Mm -hmm. And it's get shows, you know, in an asynchronous fashion, but it's get shows. Right. You're not updating the database. You're not adding new shows or removing them. It you only oh, need here to you present. Go. Yeah. So if someone pointed out I could do multiple retries, I could wrap the whole thing in another method that does a try catch, have a retry number, and then try two, three times. Yep. yep. That's good. Um, we're going to have to do another show. I'm going to have to get off in a few minutes here and take the That's kids fun. to school. But we'll do another one, and we'll talk about App Insights. But I want to show you this. Check this little trick out. You see how that says J? Uh, that looked like a fishing hook to me. What is that? Oh, I freaking love this. I like – that's a JSON object. So what I'm saying is show – Did you alias that? Yes, dude. Look. Look at line 19. Okay. I freaking love that. So This it's... is so nice. You go J using J. And what's cool about it is you can go like this, right? You could do anything. Sure, it's a okay. it's a static. Poop is a keyword. It's yeah. a using static feature in uh, and then C and then that's instant, right? And now we've gone instant. downhill. It's no, I'm just you've created cool, a keyword. Man. I've created keyword poop. Now, look how nice that looks as you stack them up. Now, some people, Damien. I uh, don't like the way I, you know, lay out my code, but it makes me happy. Let's look here on line 151. Remember, let's pop off the stack all the way back to the beginning of the conversation when I said that there's there's the long description yeah. as HTML because the long description is actually Markdown. Right. So right? now you're and you're calling Markdown to HTML in there. Yeah. So I'm using a thing called Markdig, and I'm I've made it a Git. Notice that it's a Git. And I ignore it. I'm not using this for JSON serialization. I put a little helper, little little helper, on the show. You should just make that, that I. Let's alias JSON ignore to I. Yeah, actually, that won't be confusing. <laughs> no, that'd be cool. Excellent, excellent suggestion. That's the value. That's the kind of value that we get. Right. Pair totally, programming. No one. 
No one's going to think that's a problem at all. <laughs> that's going to go right through coding, um, right through the uh, code review. Okay. Sure. Now, here's the part that's interesting. I'm saying markdown.2html. So I go and I do this, and I put all this work into it, and I make this new fake meta, you know, thing, and I've, I'm, I'm patting myself in the back. I think I'm, I know where you're going with this. I'm go thinking ahead. how clever I am, right? Oh, yeah. So I get on a call. And I show Damien Edwards, God bless him, uh, that this is a useful thing and what a clever person I am. And then he comes over here and he does this. Yep. And he makes he makes a tag. If you're on the home page, show the description. Else, yep. go get the long description, not the long description as as HTML, but the long description, the one, the markdown one. Yep. And then all you have to do, let's go ahead and just look at this again. All you have to do is say markdown and then some variable mm -hmm. that has markdown in it. Oh, yeah. And then and it converts HTML it pops out. Yeah. That's tag helpers. Yeah, it's a, it's a HTML tag that we've invented that runs on the server Yes. Gets translated to HTML server side and delivers. Oh, someone was saying, "This, uh, sorry, this is really interesting. I want to do more of these with you." Someone is saying, "Sure, why am I using it? Doing a using inside of a namespace?" I don't yeah, know. that feels why like not? a violation, dude. That's not a violation of what? Oh, the I templates don't... all have it above oh. the namespace. Yeah, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I don't know. It's Here's fun. the other thing. You know, you know, I got them stacked up a certain way. Maybe they're, you know, sometimes I'll make them like all line up. Yeah, we need to bubble sort them so pretty, they you know, look like a nice tree. The older I get, I just want it to work, and I want it to work well. Um, I don't really care. Let me go find the uh, Markdown uh, tag helper real quick. There's a lot more to talk about. We're going to need to do another one. Yeah, see, here's the, way, here's the place where we made the Markdown tag helper. See, we invented a new HTML tag. And again, it's not a real HTML nope. tag. It's a tag helper. It's the, a, the markdown never gets output to the to the client. Right. So the markdown, now, markdown element never gets. So now it's not just in that one class where you wrote markdown convert to HTML. Now you can put the, put this on any string inside of your application. Yep. Yep. And all it is is one function called mm. process. Go and do it. And look, it's calling markdown dot to HTML anyway, just like I said it was gonna. Right. Yep. So so Damien made me feel bad about myself, which is fun. No, but I learned a lot. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Caching. Yeah, we didn't even talk about. Oh, we have so much more to talk about. Oh yeah. We, we got to talk about um, App Insights. I got to talk about how I publish to staging, publish to production, load balancing. Uh, how our I got to, our friend I uh, Isaac Levine is going to come on in a couple shows, and he's going to show how we can take my Stream Tools project, hook up App Insights, and start generating some insights some custom insights off of when followers join, view, new viewers come on, we can look at that as well. But people are disappointed I haven't named anything fancy pants yet. I think that's a valid point. We need a fancy it's pants tag helper. Extremely valid. I should put it into the JavaScript. I'll change options because, to fancy pants. Because all JavaScript is fancy. Okay, so check this out. Another tag helper, line seven, cache. I'm taking the archives, which creates you know, 600. So, right. Cache is another. This isn't a normal HTML tag. That is not an HTML tag. He, I'm, I'm going to spin through the archives page and create a huge string. So mm -hmm. let's get back to the point where the individual was saying, um, hey, why didn't you use String Builder? Very good right. question. Not really necessary if you're doing a couple hundred bytes of strings. But if you're doing something crazy in a loop of hundreds and thousands, if I'm spinning through a thousand shows, I could do a String Builder. Or what if I did fragment caching like this and said, hey, just cache this entire thing right. for four hours. Sure. Then I who cares that it takes... I can sloppy as I want to. Yeah, here, who, right? who cares if it takes a, a second or two to actually generate this if you're not generating it except yep. for once every couple hours? Yeah. Would you do me a favor and control scroll and kind of get it so the entire archives page is on the screen? It's not that big, is it? No, it's not. That's yeah, but... it. That's it. See? Nice, and it's all wrapped in that cache tag helper. The entire thing is wrapped in the cache. And yes, so so Rinrec is paying the cache helper, the cache tag helper from .NET Core, exactly. 
not yep. made by me. So this is a good yep. point. So let's let's call that out. Thank you for pointing that out. Look here, over in. There you go. Make that bigger. Yeah. There's two tag helpers. Thank you for for reminding us of that. Those are the ones made by by Microsoft, Microsoft. and that's the ones added by me. Right. Now, right. And line three gets added to the default templates for you. Mm -hmm. Right. When you say file new project, you get what's in line three there. Yep. Yep. So that's really convenient. So right now, uh, can I share my screen to you or am I allowed to do that? Um, you can. I'll need to move it around. I'll need to stop sharing my screen back to you. Stop sharing screen. Oh, wait a sec. There was share system sound. Oh, I'm going to share my screen while you're doing that. Go ahead, share it, and then I will move it into the stage. Oh, no. I need to... Can I pop this out? I thought there was a way to pop out the screen. Because this this is a mess now. Because now your screen is... Have I ruined it for everyone? You've ruined it! Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. There was a way to pop this out. Sorry, I just changed everything and messed it up at the last time. You've one. messed everything up. All right, let's do this. I am. I need to hide the... I need to hide chat. I'm going to move this up here. So we're going to kind of play some inside baseball here. So folks... What are people seeing? They are seeing... Well, they see you now down here in the bottom corner. All right, there well, you I'm are. There's you. into Azure. So there's Azure. Okay, so you can see now? So now we're seeing Scott's screen, and now you're not above your name on the side there. You're now in the bottom corner. All right. So I'm using this cool tool here called Azure Mask. Yeah, our friends on the cloud developer team built this. And what this is nice is that we're doing a live stream right now, right? Mm -hmm. So you notice it's masked. It's hidden my subscription ID in a blur. Oh, yeah. And uh, the other things that we don't, you don't need to know about. Those keys, those those things that are important, folks don't get. This is interesting. Some someone is doing something on my on my blog right now. See this here? Yeah, somebody. Someone's uh, either attacking it or poking at it. My blog, rather, but my all, all my of app. two meg. I mean, they're really. Oh no, but they're you know they're they're poking <laughs> at it. Let's go and see what's going on there. Sure. See, so here I can go into application insights. Let's do this actually. Let's so, do app insights. You didn't really have to configure anything to get App Insights nah, working. Other no, we'll, than... do, we'll do this another time. It's nuts. Yeah. Check this out. Okay, everybody, go hit my pop, my podcast site. So um, one of the admins, can you post into the chat room, HanselMinutes.com. So folks you have an can admin? click that link. Uh, I have a couple moderators, folks in Mixer and in Twitch. Yes, the um, one by Clark IO is the, uh, is the one, Brian Clark. See? So I can see... Incoming go. requests Thanks, Chris. live. Yeah, look, look, look. Here they come. See? Yeah. See right there? And standby reloading. Can you throw that in the Twitch chat room also, please? See? Cool. Thank you. There we go. So now we can see right. folks hitting And I can build all these queries and stuff. See, look, so now people are hitting it, right? I can then go and, and look at those and open them, like, in analytics and run queries basically on that incoming request rate. There you are, see? Then I can go and click on individual data points within them and see what's going on. Who are those people? Where are they coming from? To see more information. There? Yeah, more, more information. log information about that request. Yeah, see? So you can see where people started bouncing right there. Mm -hmm. Now I can go over here. I can see, look, were there any errors? There's been no errors since yesterday mm -hmm. at, look at this, see? You see where things went wrong? There was failed requests yesterday I can click on the failures and you really see, see three failures. Look at that. Now I can go on those failures. Here's a failure, 500. Okay. And you get and to see look, everything. I could about make the a bug. I could say local new work item. And throw now that look to at this. VSTS. Look what the failure was, though, right? And I can see the name of my computer because I actually have chosen to put my local and my production up there at the same time. Mm. It's a little messy. But basically what I can do is see where it says servers one. Okay. I can go like this and I'm going to hit F5. By the way, that's going to cause your system maybe to launch a browser because we're still on yep. a live share. Right. So I'm going to pull this back down so folks can see my Visual Studio is going to start actually compiling here. I'm going to 
uh, stop viewing your your. There you go. So it just screen. launched a browser here, port 5001. Remember that you're in 5002. Right. See how the orange bars so popped out now at the bottom HTTP, of mine? You're H, you need to go to HTTPS, oh, localhost yeah. 5002. So I'm going to copy this to the clipboard here okay. on mine. I'll open there Firefox. Go. Okay. Paste it. You're, I'm, in, I'm in Edge. You're in Firefox. So I just hit F5. It's, you, it's, you're hitting your local host, but it's really hitting mine. It's right. tunneling to it is. Okay. Um, and let's do this. I'm going to, are you, should we show your Azure? I'm trying to now, decide yeah, what so to do show so, so first A, show that, bring up your browser and show that like it's, it's loading. you're looking at localhost. Is oh, it yeah. still? It's still loading, waiting for localhost. Oh, it might be at a break point. Oh, are you on localhost 5002? Yep. HTTPS? Uh, you know what? That's probably it. That's the issue. That's the deal. Let's force that in. Performing a TLS handshake. Okay. Isaac will come on and go way, way, way deeper into this. I got to go take the kids to school. But, but did you get the browser to show? It's loading. It's still performing that TLS handshake. It's got to go. It might across. have a little, I don't know. It might have some little dance because I'm using a self-signed certificate. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and switch mm -hmm. back to my, my um, application oh, insights and then I will leave you. So come up? I'll do try again one more time because it's uh, it's going to tell me that yeah authenticity of it could not be validated. Son of hex power is my PC. Um, right. Now May nineteen Bell is saying that they came from uh, uh, the you know before C sharp and how would you start? I would encourage people to go and take a look at the MVAs that I did with um, with, with Maria. Us? And Jeff and John, uh, ASP.NET Core, here we go. Yep, there you go. ASP.NET Core beginner. This is a good way to learn. Can you see my screen? Oh, yeah. I've moved it up so that everybody can see it. So this is a great class that we did. Uh, and you guys, you and uh, John show up and you do web APIs and more advanced techniques. This is the beginner one. So for May, who is listening, I would encourage you to, to check that out and watch oh, this yeah. video where Maria, Maria teaches me ASP.NET, which is cool. Now, back over here, look where it says two servers. Right. There's a live stream, right? Watch. Scroll down. See? There's Son of Hex Power. That's my computer I'm on right now. That, right. Now, this That's is not a best in your practice. Home. Isaac, Isaac will come on and explain to you that this is a bad idea. There it but, is. Uh, but right. I like it. I think it's cool, right? Not neat? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, check this out. This is so so there's all the the right the application layout for how this website yeah, runs that's me on the back end calling the back end api right if i was calling multiple back end apis they appear like this mm -hmm. up, 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 right and then this is client code doing ajax calls right and it's mapping that out i don't know why where that's calling maybe it's calling window you know local window and then you've got your different availabilities, like is the site up and where is it coming from? And I've actually got web tests because I want to make sure it's working for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where are my web tests? Check this out. It's so good. It's it's nuts. I, I mean, I feel like, the, I, I, always, I like to say that the second page of my resume is now just ripped out and become a checkbox in the cloud. Uh, yeah, you know all, the, all the time the we used to spend. Entire jobs, entire jobs were doing this kind of stuff. It's insane. But Isaac is going to dig into this and give him a lot more detail because I'm just learning. This has only been a week. Check this out. Here's a web a load test I did. Okay. But there's another 38,000 hits. Oh, yeah, yeah. It works great. Um, I forgot where it is, but I did. The, yeah, so this was from Southeast Asia. I did some web test. I forgot where it was. Shoot. You did basically, a load test. Basically, like, no, no, not a load test. I have a test that, like, makes sure the site's up. Oh, um, you know what I mean? Like a check mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm. sure, because I basically have it run. Let's go back over to here. Availability. There you go. Look, site is up. See, these are my availability tests. Yeah, look at that. See? And it'll text me if things go bad. Notice how this use, one here. We use services there? like Pingdom to do this. Yep. See this bad one here? Yeah. It took, uh, 12 seconds or whatever. That's when my site was down first. Just as, not down, but it took 12 seconds from Brazil. So look, I picked my locations. 
where you're testing from. Yeah, man. See? Nice. So good. Anyway, I'm going to go take the kids to school. Uh, everyone who, who, who watched, including beginners, I want to point out there were some great beginners and some new people here. I want to really encourage you, what you all can do to help me, if you, uh, if you like me, if you like what I've been doing for the last 15 years, I want you to support Jeff, support the, the Twitch stream, oh, talk yeah. about the stream, uh, live, uh, dot, jeffreyfritz.com. Yep, there you go. That's a way to jump off to see more of this. Yep. And please subscribe to my podcast. I've done over 600 episodes with just all kinds of cool people talking about all kinds of cool stuff. This is over 300. There's, look, check it out. There's Here's some... how, this is a good, a good pitch. You want to learn about live coding on Twitch? Sue's Hinton is the expert. Uh, Check it out. Pop another uh, tab there. Go to that livejeffreyfritz.com. There's a link in there that shows my setup. Oh, and this folks is good. Will learn how to. How you've to made do a very this. sophisticated setup. You've got a green screen. Oh yeah. You explain exactly how to do it, and you can go and see there's the a, existing and previous broadcasts. Yeah, there's a link just a little bit further down off to their live streaming. Live streaming. This is how he does it. And it's, it's really on the cheap. I mean, what do you got? Oh, my this? gosh, yes. How much money have you spent? I, what, spent maybe 100 bucks on a mic, a total of 100 bucks on lighting in the green screen, so 200 Get the green screen? Yeah. That's that's disturbing. That, sorry. I wanted to make sure it was a happy face. Yeah, there, there so it that's is. literally, you're sitting in front that's, of a green screen. That's what it looks that's like so if cool. I were to turn off. Yeah. That's you so know. cool. So. All right. So the setup, just go to um, go to live.jeffreyfritz.com. Scroll really down, awesome. live streaming 101. Please go and subscribe to Hansel Minutes. Tell your friends. Absolutely. Um, it's a pretty good show, and I like it a lot. And I'm going to keep uh, working on this and updating it. And uh, hopefully we'll have some guests and stuff come and uh, talk about this. This is really cool, uh, cool. sir. I I'm, dig it. I'm glad you enjoy it. We, the, um, Our boss wants to join us at some point and talk about some ASP.NET features. Um, oh, no. Yeah, so we're going to dial in Scott Hunter at some point. Mm. And, and I have had a suggestion for, for somebody to host, to, to have us join us at Build, somebody who might know a thing or two about TypeScript. Ooh, um, that'd be, that'd so, be cool. Oh, by the way, just for folks to see, could you maybe Zoom? Are you allowed to Zoom? I just oh, want to show. I can't Zoom your screen. You're sharing your screen. Okay, well, check this. Oh, I can Zoom. Can I Zoom? Control plus. <gasps> okay. okay. I wanted to show down here. That's live share. Yep. See? So, and then, right, the little gang of click, folks next to it. See, look. Mm-hmm. That's me sharing my ports. But there was another item down there. If you go back down to the footer, you see the little gang of folks there? Click that, and it'll show... It should show me there somewhere, connected. See this right here? Pin an editor to a collaborator. Okay, can you move around my code now? So I will go back into my... I'm not moving my mouse. Can you, like, open a file or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go back to my Visual Studio. That's not my Visual Studio. That's you. Jump to Jeff Fritz, currently editing helpers.cs. So there's that. So cool. All so right. I am so yeah, that here. Look at that. And I'm that's I'm not don't breaking mess it up. things. I, I broke this. I have no tests. There I am. So good. All right. Oh yeah. I will talk to you later, sir. Alrighty. I'll catch you later. Thanks Bye. so much for everybody that, that joined us. We'll have the archive of this show out on YouTube a little bit later today. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Thanks to Scott for joining us. He had to run. He's got to take care of the kids. But uh, this was great fun, I hope. And there, Scott disconnected and shut everything down. Um, so I actually have to run. I have a meeting to go to. I'm working on a Microsoft event that I need to help plan. Thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Lots and lots of viewers tuning in. All the follows. I really appreciate that. Um, I saw some folks trying to uh, put some cheers out there on Twitch. I appreciate those as well. Of course, cheers, subscriptions, all of those will turn into donations to Girl Develop It. That's a nonprofit organization that supports uh, training women and underserved minorities to learn how to write code. Um, this is completely nonprofit, this stream, and we want to make sure that we support those folks who want to learn to be better developers. So thanks again, everybody. I will be back on Saturday. We'll be doing some live coding together. There's Brendan. Thanks so much for the cheer. Um, 
And uh, we've got lots of questions there in the chat room. Do me a favor, copy your questions out to our Git repository and uh, drop an issue in there with your question. And I will be sure to get to that on Saturday when I come back and do some more live streaming. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next time.